you want out of a program of choice, you know? You know, I'm, Coach is going to get on me. I don't like sugarcoating coaching. I'm trying to get that next level. So Coach is going to get on me. And a team, a team oriented and a family. You know. AJ DeBonsa. I've been waiting to do this video for about six months. About the time that somebody called me who got a lot of juice in these NBA circles. They make a lot of decisions on what happens inside of the NBA. And they told me that you were the greatest high school player that they had ever seen in person. I thought it was gas. I thought it was hyperbole. So much so that I had to come see you myself. I pulled up at the Dallas EYBL session. And I watched three of your games. And I agree. You are one of the greatest high school players I have ever seen. I'm calling you AJ Dynasty because that's what you have a chance to be. You have the chance to be a franchise pillar in an NBA dynasty. You got a chance to be the number one pick in the 2026 NBA draft. You got a chance to be rookie of the year. You got a chance to be an NBA all-star. You got a chance to be all NBA. You got a chance to be the MVP of the league one day. You have a realistic chance to get to the Hall of Fame. But right now, you're 16, and you're at Prolific Prep. You're in high school, and your game got a lot of flaws. And I'm glad you said you don't like sugarcoating coaches, because I ain't no sugarcoating coach. Never have been, never will be. Only thing I got is my truth. And in this video, I'm going to give you all the truth about your game so you can reach your career goals that you have listed that you want to accomplish for you and your family. I hope you take heed, and I hope you pay attention. My ducks, my swans, welcome to the pod. My name is Dorian from group82basketball.com and right here we're watching AJ DeBonsa at the Nike EYBL Peach Jam. Now what we got right here, AJ, you get a loose ball up under the defensive glass and you look at your teammate in transition, you look at this man dead in his eyes, but you decide not to pass him the ball. Maybe because he's not a great finisher. Maybe because that defender's on the opposite side. Maybe it makes more sense for you to drive to the left side. But what you decide to do is cross over right. You get smacked on your elbow, but it doesn't really matter right now. And the great thing I love about this play is you allow your teammate to set a screen for you up under the basket unknowingly. But the thing that I do not like about this play is that that ball ends up at your chin. This is something that I notice you do a lot. When you drive, man, you lose control on your move and that ball ends up getting very, very high. That ball getting high is something you're gonna have to fix. It's gonna be an overarching thing throughout this video. And this move right here, you fake right and you come back left because this is the right read. If you go right, there's defenders over there. You decide to attack this man's top foot, which is what every great scorer does. But when you attack his top foot, you see how your eye level with him and your shoulders are level with him? We gonna need you to get a lot lower if you wanna become one of these great scorers. Also, that ball has to be back by your hip in your pocket. Because when you start going up against a Paul George, a Kawhi Leonard, a Jason Tatum, a Brandon Ingram, they can poke that away. Once again, we got a different angle with this same move. You could attack that man's top foot. You actually could have made him fall. But you see what I'm saying right there? See how close his hand is to that ball? You want to make sure that thing is in your hip, is on your pocket, because you don't want to get some easy turnovers. Look at Paul George right here. He crossed over, put that thing right there. Boom, step back right in your mouth. I'm trying to become more of a guard. You know, I gotta get my handles better. I gotta be able to come up ball screen for my height. You know, I'm not gonna be playing a three. At the next three, four, at the next level, I'm gonna be playing a two. I'm glad you're conscious about what position you're gonna be playing at the next level because you're right. You're gonna be playing a two, possibly even the one based on the team that you get on. But look where your shoulders are. You should be at his waist, not up there level with his shoulders. And look how far the ball is away from you. Once again, if somebody was coming on that weak side, they could come and poke that away. If you're going to be a guard, this, these are things that you have to learn. These are things that you have to fix right now. And you were able to find your teammate for an open jump shot. It looked like your hands are really big, but it's always not going to be that easy. You got into the same situation right here. I would have loved that when you started off this dribble move, you ripped from your shoulder all the way down to your ankle. What that would have made you do, that would have made you get low. But you didn't. You made a little weak move, and look, your shoulders are right there where he is. Look where Devin Booker is. Look how low his shoulder is. He's right at dude's waist. You right here at homeboy's shoulder. So what you got to do, you got to push off a little bit where you expose the ball. If that guy's longer, once again, PG, Kawhi, Brandon Ingram, Jason Tatum, that's a poke away. Lucky, you are a great mid-range shooter right now, so it's automatic. 
I love this isolation cliff right here where you're at the top of the key and you find a way to try to get to the rim. Anybody that's a great scorer is always looking at the rim. You play offense with your eyes because that's where the defense is usually looking. So I love that you're locking into scoring right now. You glance at the clock a little bit, and this is one of your favorite moves, your little hesitation for you drop in. You stand all the way up, straight up, while this guy's in a great defensive stance. Look at where your shoulders are again. Level with him, we should be at his waist like Devin Booker is right there. Something you have to fix immediately. Because you're so high this time, that help defender makes you pay. He gets his hands in there and ties it up and got you praying to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for help. You play too high. You dribble too high. You don't relax your body. You're not breathing when you're making these offensive moves. You're holding your breath, and that's why you're so tense. Get like Devin Booker and get to their waist. What immediately stood out to me in your skill set when I saw you play in person was how good of a shooter you are. Usually dudes that are this athletic and this long and this bouncy, they're not good shooters. The reason being, you got great fundamentals. Look at you, you're shot ready. Down, hands out, this is, should be an immediate put up. But what do you do? When you catch the ball, you stand straight up. Why are you standing straight up? You were already ready. And then you compound the mistake by dipping the ball and coming back down, putting the ball in front of the family jewels. Look at the separation you got with homeboy right there. There's absolutely no reason for you to be standing straight up and dipping that ball where you already had it taken care of. I love that teams can run this with you as well. The fact that you are such a great catch and shoot shooter at this point, we can run plays like this. This floppy action where your head was up under the rim, the defender points out like, hey, you see him coming off the screen. You catch it, you were immediately ready to go up, but what do you do? You dip in front of family jewels again. Because you do this, your prolific prep teammate, the number one player in the 2026 class, Tyran Stokes, gets a great contest on you, but not good enough. But look at how this ball goes in. The reason it rattled in and almost came out and went back in is because you dipped and you gave him a little bit of time to catch up. You do something egregious over here on this baseline out of bounds play that you need to fix ASAP. Along with playing too high, you have to stop this right now. You know where that screen is coming. Dude decides to go under, you catch that, that's an automatic three. But you're not ready to shoot because your feet are facing toward the baseline when they should be facing towards the rim. Look where the ball is again. Low, not ready to go up, right in front of the family jewels when you have separation. Gave him a weak jab, another weak jab, and you take a step back up against the baseline when you have no room over there. This was not a smart move. This was not an intelligent basketball play. So most scouts will write that off as he's a low IQ player. But I don't believe you are. I watched you play in person. I saw. So I saw this clip and it's made me realize it wasn't a low IQ play. It's a habit that you have. You're at the top of the key and ain't nobody near you. There's a loose ball. You get this ball coming, you're not shot ready, but all five defenders are within at least 10 feet of you with one dude who is out of bounds. As soon as you catch the ball, you look to the left to try to pass it to your homeboy who's a great shooter in his own right, but look at where you at. You wide open. Because you wasn't ready to shoot, you start going to your habits. And what's your habits? That weak step back. This is not a good shot. You were wide open, you should have took the shot. You want to get your step back action busy, you need to be getting like how Kimba is right here. And I know you know how to do this because you was working out with the junior NBA this summer. And I see this year at Prolific Prep, you have gotten better with your step back. This move right here shows that. You put all that weight on that front foot, you have great separation right there. You're able to come down on two feet, have them square. You're able to put the ball up into your shooter's pocket immediately. So even though this dude is getting a great contest, it doesn't even matter because it's automatic. This step back action gonna be automatic. Along with your ability to make tough shots, this right here is gonna be your automatic. But homeboy, you guys stretch to the three point line. Solano's ready to set a screen for you. In the new age NBA, that has to be a three point shot. You NBA GMs, y'all hear that? Y'all hear what he said? Homeboy said he a playmaker first. I'm about to show you why. I love the fact that you directing traffic down here from the left block because you know the play that's coming is this floppy action. You gotta make sure that your screen is there. But you don't even take advantage of the screen. Look at all that space. In the NBA, you're not gonna be able to do that. Anybody can shoot through that gap. 
once you caught the ball on the left wing, you look right at Steven Solano, another Division I prospect I think a lot of people should be paying attention to, especially at the high major level, to see where he is and where he's located. You see that there's a great driving lane going to the left because these defenders are not ready, and all five of the members in the black jerseys are looking at you. You know that. You dump it off to Steven Solano, who is right there at the dunker spot for an easy reverse layup. There, You are going to have a great relationship with your bigs and the NBA level if these are the type of plays that you're going to make. NBA scouts, NBA GMs, y'all need to pay attention to this because this is stuff that God allows me to see that y'all don't see. You see he was shot ready. AJ's always shot ready. He misses the shot. Look at his body language. Look at his head. It ain't down. Look at what he's ready to do. He's ready to move and get in the middle of the defense. As soon as he turns around, he gets his matchup. AJ, this is phenomenal basketball that you're playing right now, even though the ball isn't in your hands. You survey back and look at the top of the key to see where the ball is, and now you're guarding your man, and you're in an eagle position. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. Shout out to Nick Nurse. You get a great contest on that shot where you are actually higher off the ground than the defender is where y'all are both at the same position, which causes his shot to miss short. Your teammate gets the rebound and you run all the way down and get an easy two points. That is playmaking without the ball. That is being a smart basketball player. That is not letting your shot selection or if your shot falling influence your behavior. That's playing great defense. That's playing winning basketball. This right here shows me your basketball confidence. This is what Kobe was on. This is what LeBron be on. This is what every great scorer is on. Right here, I call this pooping because you pivoting out of pressure and you did this right in front of the NBA scouts as they were watching. You keep the ball away from the defender where he can't really reach even though he tries to. Two defenders come and you have your eyes looking on the other end of the floor. You know you can't see nothing down there, so you trying to find out who's open. You turn to your right and you see your great shooter again open on the right wing, but you know it's, you can't get it there because that guy's taking away the high passing lane. You pivot through. Now this is the great part right here. You push the ball out to where the green arrow is and you chase it. If you push it out to that red arrow, that would have been a steal. Euro, finish at the rim. This shows me you are an extremely confident basketball player who I can lean my entire franchise on. I'm trying to become more of a guard. You know, I gotta get my handles better. I gotta be able to come up ball screen for my height. You know, I'm not gonna be playing a three. At the next three, four, at the next time I'm gonna be playing a two. I'm glad you know what you gotta get better at because it's blatantly obvious. This is you playmaking again. I love that you do this direct in traffic because you want to get that ISO on that left driving lane. So you're telling your homeboy go from the left corner over there to the right corner. Whack V cut where you get open, you survey the entire defense and you see they all on the right side. So it makes common sense, right, for you to make a move to the left side, which you do. But you get down here, you make this dribble move and there's three defenders right there. This is where you have to bring that ball back out and reset the offense because look at where all your teammates are on the opposite side. But what do you do? You go over there and you shoot that whack reverse. Bro, just like you was just playing really smart, good basketball, this is stupid basketball. This is stuff that's going to get you on the bench. And this is a habit with you, right? Here you are playing Tyran Stokes again, your prolific prep teammate. He's playing you too close. He can't keep up with you. He ain't fast enough. So you see his wide up on the floor and you spin off of him. You commit an offensive foul grabbing his arm because you're not low enough like Devin Booker's been telling us all day. You start coming downhill and you got his entire body weight going forward. Man, you should have snatched back him like crazy, bro. That should have been top 10 on Sports Center, like J.R. Smith did Tristan Thompson right here. Anything is possible. But no, what do you do? You overpenetrate, spin into traffic, turnover. Come on, dog. Like, you can't call yourself the number one player in the country and you want to be the number one overall pick doing stupid stuff like this. Now, as a coach of a high IQ player, I'm like, okay, he going to learn his lesson, right? Nah. You didn't. And this is where you being young, you ain't really got the skill set yet to get yourself out of these situations getting you in trouble. You got a great screen right here and you should have snaked it. But you don't snake it. You come off of it and you look this man in his eyes. You get really low this time, but it's four dudes waiting on you, man. 
It was four dudes sitting right there. Look at CJ McCollum and look at how he snakes his screen. Look at where his shoulders are. Look at what he does. He touches his teammate on the chest, not his opponent where he doesn't get a foul. Look how low he gets. Look at where his hand is. Look at where the ball is. Look at how he gets his shoulder and gets skinny past homeboy's arm and gets to the basket and finishes with a finger roll. Look at Giannis doing the exact same thing. And this is a seven-footer. He gets a great screen from Brooke Lopez. There is absolutely no room for anybody to get through as opposed to your, you when you come off of screens. He snakes that, gets around that, takes one step, and dunks on Daniel Gafford's head. I gotta be able to come on ball screens for my height. Not only do you gotta be better coming off ball screens for your height, you gotta get better at reading ball screens all together. When you are coming off as a ball screener, you said you want to play the one, you want to play the two. You're doing the right thing right here, and you're directing traffic. You're asking Steven Solano, your seven-foot great role man and great screener, to come get you. When you come off this screen, you need to be looking at the tag guy. That's the only person you need to be looking at because he's the one that's going to take away the role, which is exactly what this dude right here did. And if you are looking at the tag guy, you know that you're going to have a shooter wide open in the corner. What do you do? You throw it through the red zone. You throw it exactly where the tag guy is taught to come and get a steal, which is an easy turnover for him. And you do the same thing again over here, but in a different scenario. Steven Solano sets that ball screen. He's a great screener. Once again, you're a high major school. I suggest taking a look at him. And you need to be looking at the tag guy. Now, if you could snake this right here or do that crossover you did in the very first clip, you can go and dunk on that tag guy. But you go into the paint, over penetrate again. Now you're double team, even though Steven Solano has set a great screen for the shooter on the opposite side, but you get back tapped and you get ripped. This is stuff that you got to get way better at right now if you want to be a point guard or shooting guard at the NBA level. Another aspect of your game that I really love, AJ, is that you hit tough shots. And every great scorer got to be a tough shot maker. Here you are at the mid post extended catching that ball and you're standing straight up, which I've been talking about you doing all day. But I like that you do it here because it causes that left defender to rise up, which opens up that right driving lane. Look at what you did. Your shoulders at homeboy's weights. And then you get it, you get elevated off the ground where he has absolutely no chance because you already got two feet on him before he even gets a chance to get off the ground. That's a wide open jump shot. In high school, in college, and in the NBA, you gonna get this shot all the time. Here is 6'3 Donovan Mitchell getting that shot at the end of the game that NBA on ESPN put on their Instagram. He got a great look. He just missed it on Max Christie. Look at what he's doing. Zigzagging, Z-drill. I know your AAU team has done that, attacking that top foot. Get stops, pops, but he just missed it. What I really, really love to do is play defense. Defense. I just love it. To me, defense and rebound wins every time. Defense. No matter where you play, you play here, you play in Marsh, you play anywhere you want. If you can shut somebody down and rebound the basketball, you're going to win. Defense. You NBA scouts, GMs, personnel members, this man said he takes pride in his defense. And I'll be honest, AJ, when I saw you play, this what stood out to me the most was your defense. Most kids your age do not guard like this. This possession shows that. I would love for you been up the line on Tyran Stokes a little bit, but you know his game, so you're sagging off. When you meet him on the left wing, you got your hands up, you're taking away the high passing lane. This is a concept called eagle. We'll talk about it a little bit later. As Steven Solano fronts the post, that entry pass isn't there. You have a one-on-one -on -one matchup, you funnel him in the help, and you have your hand up to take away a shot. But most guys your age, most kids your age, they're going to swipe down, try to get a steal. You remain disciplined, come back there for the help to be able to contest this shot. This guy doesn't get a good chance to follow through, which causes him to miss, and your team possesses the rebound. So you shut down that entire possession by yourself. This shows me you can handle advanced defensive principles and concepts. Your man is screening, so you need to be the one calling out the coverage, which you do. You drop back into a drop position. Instead of going up the midline to the right towards the ball, like most defenders your age, you go towards your man and you eagle to take away the lob. Why would you eagle to take away the lob? What is eagle? Let's let Nick Nurse tell you what it is. This is another big idea we had last year was the eagle. 
right? We like we like uh, we like starting our defense, getting our players to use their length. We used to just say, you know, show your length. And then we said we started calling it eagle. So when we come down the floor, you'll hear our coaches yell eagle. So you heard it straight from an NBA coach's mouth. You already doing advanced NBA concepts. Don't let nobody take it away from you. This possession, you put it into place as well as you guard Tyran Stokes away from the ball. You're in help position, but you're looking directly at the ball while still having your man in your peripheral vision. You come down to help, and now you see there's going to be a matchup confusion between you and your point guard. So you point out exactly who you have so that guy can know who he has. You get up here and you deny the passing lane, which you hardly see anyone do anymore then once you deny the passing lane you come close to him and you eagle any sort of lob that will be taken away man who taught you this where's that come from that comes from uh, my eighth grade coach i i came into uh, eighth grade you know not soft but like you know like not really competitive and he got on me every single day and i just started like just screaming i just i just hate the feeling of losing now so I love how you lit up when you're talking about your eighth grade coach. That shows me he probably had a lot to do with this as well. He probably also told you not to dig on these dudes that can't finish around the basket and leave a wide open shooter, something you don't want to do in the NBA. You remain very patient here. Steven Solano has it taken care of. You get the rebound. Now you're going the other direction. You know, this is the type of stuff that's going to get you on all NBA defensive teams. You can be a possible defensive player of the year type of stuff that's going to make sure that you get multiple max contracts because you're not only an elite scorer, you're an elite defender as well. You know, for all you NBA personnel that's tired of missing in the draft, this is how you really can evaluate a guy to see where he's going to be at the next level. You got to evaluate him based on a sequence of events. And AJ, you did a phenomenal job right here in this sequence showing how you can impact the game without hitting shots. Because right here, you take this jump shot and you miss it and I see you staring at the ball and you don't have any reaction to you having a missed shot you don't put your head down or nothing you ready to get active you sprint and you take away and squeeze this gap for this ball handler while seem being simultaneously matched up with the man who's behind you you turn around and you play the passing lane which forces this guy to make a terrible pass and you go and you attack the ball like you a defensive lineman there's a fumble right in front of you when you get possession of it you look ahead and you pitch it to your homeboy Steven Solano. Out of all the film of yours I watched, AJ, this is my favorite clip of yours. Because remember that reverse layup we was talking about earlier that you shot that was stupid when you over penetrated? This is the back end of that play. After that stupid shot, you are number nine of 10 people in this transition situation. So that means that you gotta get down the floor as fast as you possibly can, and you wouldn't even run that fast, so you still got down there in a great rebounding position where you're able to grab it with one hand while knowing you're gonna land nearly on that baseline under traffic up under the rim. Look at all those people. You're number nine of 10 in this transition situation again, and you got the ball. But what do you do? You maintain your center of gravity and you make sure you stay in the middle of the floor. You come around and now you've got an option. You can take it to the right, get that easy wing three. You can have a hockey assist or you can pass it directly to the guy in the corner yourself. You do that and that gets him a wide open three. Now I don't even know homeboy. I don't even know who he is. I don't remember him seeing too many buckets while watching your tape. But look at him. He's ready to guard. Look at his defensive stance. You know after dudes hit shots, they'd be ready to play defense and watch how that energy that transferred from you getting him that assist impacts the rest of the actual team. You're guarding Tyran Stokes, your teammate at Prolific Prep, number one 2025, number one 2026, the matchup people want to see. He tries to get you on your back foot. You can test the shot, get a great contest in there, which is going to make the shot go long. When the shot goes long, your teammates get the rebound. This is your point guard. Look what he does. He's left-handed. But because you got it to the middle of the floor, now the patterns of his brain to get it to the middle of the floor. And he dribbles to the middle of the floor, and look what's on his left side. He got two options. He can hit that dude on the left wing, which he did. He points for that hockey assist, and now your team is going to get three more points, all because you made the right basketball plays. When people talk about elite basketball players with high basketball IQs who make the right plays at the right time that win NBA championships, it's stuff like this. 
This is the stuff that makes me say that you were the best high school player I've ever seen in person. This is stuff that puts these expectations on your shoulders. I am telling you right now, you can be a guy that can win three, four, five, six championships in the NBA. You got a chance to be one of the greatest players of all time. But you got to get your game super sharp and you got to start taking it super, super serious now. Because there ain't too many guys out here that can have impacts on the teams like you can. I'm out the pond. Y'all stay true. Oh, it's the Sunday, gotta call my uncle.